In this module, we will discuss and discover the geometrical interpretation of reciprocal lattice. We have seen that uh, a reciprocal lattice is a Fourier transform of a, a real lattice, uh, but a reciprocal lattice has a deeper connection with a concept which we already discussed, and that concept is that of lattice planes. And it is important to understand the connection between reciprocal lattice and lattice planes before we go on to discuss scattering in uh, um, in lattices or scattering in crystals. So we start with a bit of geometry. So imagine a vector A with a certain magnitude pointing in a certain direction. Uh, and defined with respect to a certain origin O. Uh, let us define a plane which is perpendicular to this vector A. So if we take any point within the plane, uh, a plane which is perpendicular to this vector A, and find the position of that point, let's say it's given by a, a vector R, then the dot product between the vector a and the dot product and the uh, vector r is simply a constant uh, and it doesn't depend where you choose your point within the plane no matter where this r is but as long as it is pointing towards any point within the plane this dot product should give you the same constant so a dot r is something which is a constant over this whole plane. Uh, why is this the case? You can easily see it. Let's say if r min is the minimum distance between the plane and the origin, then this dot product between a and r is simply given by the magnitude of a multiplied by the, this minimum distance. And as this minimum distance is going to be the same, no matter where you are on the plane, this dot, dot product would give you the same value. So we can say that this dot product, uh, which gives you a constant value, represent a plane, a points on planes, on planes such that that plane is perpendicular to this vector a. Um, you can also from here find this uh, minimum distance between this origin and the plane using this relation where c is simply the dot product and if you divide the dot product by the magnitude of a you get the minimum distance from the origin to the plane uh, there's another way to describe uh, planes perpendicular to a certain vectors and that is in terms of their phase uh, representation so you can uh, write uh, this dot product in terms of a phase and then we can say that this plane has a constant phase on it uh, maybe you have already seen such a description for a uh, plane wave in electromagnetic fields so now let's take the discussion a bit further and instead of a single plane let's take a set of planes so these two planes um, which are maybe part of set of many many planes such that that set of planes is perpendicular to a vector a so this plane which is part of that set set is perpendicular to a and same is true for this one as well so how would you mathematically represent such a set of planes? So let's make use of this phase re representation of wave. And we demand that this exponent has a value 1. And such a description can represent a set of plane if we demand that this a dot r which is a dot product which was previously just one constant is not simply a constant rather it's a constant such that it is an integer multiple of 2 pi then 
if it is an integer of multiple of 2 pi, such an equation, such a relationship can be easily fulfilled for different values of m and different values of m would give you different planes within that set of planes which are perpendicular to a vector a and you can find the minimum distance of let's say the mth plane within that set by simply dividing 2 pi m which is the dot product divided by a where a is the uh, dimension or the length of the vector a so let's find the distance d between these two planes which may be part of a set of planes where d is the shortest distance between these two neighboring planes so let's r1 is the position vector within this plane and r2 is the position vector within this plane it can be anywhere on this plane but these two planes are perpendicular to uh, this vector a so we can associate let's say this plane with an integer m such that this a dot r2 where r2 is this position vector anywhere on this plane gives you 2 pi multiplied by m then the next plane which is has a position vector r1 on it it would have a dot product of a with a given by 2 pi m plus 1 so if this is the mth uh, uh, plane this would be the m plus 1 plane and so on and so forth so we found the two neighboring uh, planes uh, the dot product of two neighboring planes within a set of planes and then you can go a bit further and find the minimum distance of plane 1 from the origin which would be 2 pi m plus 1 divided by the magnitude of a and similarly you can find the minimum distance of plane r2 from the uh, origin which would be simply 2 pi m by a now these are the minimum distances from this you can find but just by subtracting these two you can find the interplanar distance in this set of planes or uh, you can also demand that i have this dot product and this product just the difference of these two dot product would be 2 pi or you can demand that just subtract these two minimum distances and this should give me d where d is the um, interplanar distance so d uh, by subtracting here would be uh, just r min 1 minus r min 2 is simply given by 2 pi by a so we found the we not only found it a nice description for a set of planes we also find a um, an expression for the interplanar distance for such a set of planes let's go a bit further and we have the same scenario where we have one plane perpendicular to a but this time this plane is not any plane but rather it is a lattice plane which would mean that this plane contains several lattice points or um, or infinite number of lattice points so the position vector so if this origin o is located at a certain lattice point then the position vector which points to another lattice point should be given by a capital r which is a real lattice vector instead of a small r so what you have to do is you have to replace your small r which you was a simple position vector by a capital r where a capital r is now a real lattice vector given by such a linear superposition of three position now lattice vectors a1 a2 and a3 which can be defined for a certain let's say maybe it's a three dimension lattice and this is just one plane out of a uh, of out of this lattice and r would describe this whole lattice in three dimensions so 
what we have done now is replace the position vector by r now we can say that if uh, i write such an expression it would give me a set of an expression mathematical expression for a set of planes uh, such that they are lattice planes so this expression would not only describe one lattice plane but many many different lattice planes no you might be wondering we have seen such an expression before for lattice planes and that expression was in terms of uh, uh, we haven't seen that expression for lattice plane but rather we have seen it uh, when we were trying to connect the real space with reciprocal space and we had a connection and we had an equation like this where we were trying to connect a real space with a reciprocal space you can see the similarities here uh, what we can do now is replace this a by g and we would have our crystallographic analog for this. So what we do is instead of a vector A, no, I write a vector G replaced by A such that G is perpendicular to this lattice plane. And this condition would be fulfilled for this G for all values of r where r represent any point on the real lattice now this expression tells you that it uh, this expression gives you a representation for a set of lattice planes and where g is not any vector but rather a reciprocal lattice vector and that reciprocal lattice vector can be written as a linear combination of the primitive reciprocal lattice vectors b1 b2 and b3 which in the last module we found out how to calculate m1 m2 and m3 are integers and this linear combination can give you the uh, any lattice point within the reciprocal lattice of the reciprocal space of the crystal so we have these important considerations here we have a set of planes and we have a reciprocal lattice which is perpendicular to the lattice planes now the question is are there if we take g as a vector which is perpendicular to a lattice plane is there any restrictions on g itself so the restriction is that eig dot r equals to 1 should not only represent just any planes but rather they should represent a family of planes if this expression has to represent the whole crystal itself so because only a family of planes would form a set of such lattice planes which can cover your whole lattice that's how we define family of planes as a set of planes which contains lattice points and if you combine all the members of the family of planes you can scan the whole lattice points within the three-dimensional space so that's the kind of restriction you have that this and this expression mathematical expression should represent a family of plane and let's see what restriction it puts on the g itself one restriction one property of g we already know and that is the direction of g it should be perpendicular to a certain family of planes which you want to represent with g uh, let's see what are the restrictions on the magnitude of g so we already saw the restriction on the direction of g um, what are the restrictions on the magnitude of g and the restriction is that you have to choose the minimum magnitude of g to represent a family of plane uh, such a, a minimum magnitude reciprocal lattice vector is called as g min uh, and what the question is what do we mean by 
the minimum reciprocal lattice vector. So imagine you have a lattice and you want to describe certain planes in here or set of planes in here. So the set of planes as we saw can be represented by a cert defining a certain G. Let's say we have G1 uh, with a certain magnitude which is given by this length of this arrow and by the previous mathematical expression uh, this G would corresponds to a certain set of planes. Let's say that set of planes are given by this. So these are just lines but you can just visualize them that they, they are planes which extend along the out of the plane as well. So this these are the set of planes which is given by this g vector g1. What if we have a larger g? Let's say a larger g for example g twice that of g1. So that would be g2 which has a magnitude twice that of g1. What would it mean for what kind of set of planes would g2 form? And just a bit naive thing is that g would be because it's g is 2 pi by d where uh, the magnitude of g where d is uh, the interplanar distance for that set of planes. So previously uh, we defined d equals to 2 pi by magnitude of a uh, where a was with a turned out to be the, the g vector. Now we have written the same thing in a slightly different way uh, which tells you that the interplanar distance basically depends on g inversely so that if the magnitude of g is increased the interplanar distance should decrease so this g then represent a set of planes which look like this which have half the interplanar distance as compared to that. So uh, does this g2 represent a family of planes and the answer is no because what you have here are these extra planes which doesn't contain any lattice point so this set of planes are not family of lattice planes but this set of planes are represent definitely represent a family of lattice planes uh, why this then we ask here you have to choose the g min so the question is is g1 really the g min or the minimum um, g vector or the minimum value of the reciprocal vector we can take what if we have a smaller magnitude for example uh, take this lattice again and you define g3 which is smaller than g1 so by this relation, if you the g is smaller, the d, which is a, this interplanar distance, will become larger, and this g would represent such a set of planes. Uh, they are again the set of planes doesn't represent family of plane because they miss certain lattice point. So if you take the magnitude of g smaller than g1 it would mean that the spacing become larger than this um, uh, this inter lattice point distance and you would start missing lattice point so this is indeed the g min or the minimum magnitude of g along this direction which you can take so in other words, we can say that G1 is a reciprocal lattice vector in this direction for this kind of lattice. We have already seen one representation or nomenclature of representing lattice planes uh, which was called as Miller indices. So for example if you have a plane which cuts these three um, axes a1, a2, a3 which are the directions defined by the real space vector or real lattice vectors um, then you can 
if you find the intercepts of this plane uh, on these axes you can find the Miller index of such a plane so let's say this plane cuts uh, a1 at, at a distance a a2 at a distance b and a3 at a distance c so these are the three intercepts along the three directions which you have so how do we define Miller indices was we take the inverse of that these numbers so 1 over a 1 over b 1 over c and these uh, give you certain integers if they don't give you integers you have to multiply them by a least common multiple to make them integers and so you have this hkl which are integers and this hkl are called as miller indices used to um used to uh, label this plane so you might already be wondering why we are taking an inverse like this is because these are distances and if you take the inverse these are basically units of wave vectors or units in k space rather than real space so that's why miller indices really represent uh, uh, distances or wave numbers in uh, reciprocal space so what is the connection of these three numbers with our reciprocal lattice vector defined like this so because you have you have a1 a2 a3 using this you can also define b1 b2 b3 by the theorem which we described in the last uh, module and using these b1 b2 b3s which are the reciprocal lattice vectors using such a combination you can define any reciprocal vector within the reciprocal space so the connection of this with the miller indices is that these integers m1 m2 m3 which we defined uh, previously are indeed this hkl for a specific plane so if you want to describe a reciprocal lattice vector corresponding to this plane then you have to replace m1 m2 m3 by this hk and l value and you would get the reciprocal vector which would represent this plane uh, this specific plane within the lattice but last slide told us that a reciprocal lattice vector is a vector which is perpendicular to not only one lattice plane uh, but it is perpendicular to a set of planes or a family of plane so uh, let us describe such a family then so uh, I can I, I write this in a form uh, like this so I, I write it in G H K L so I have this family of planes there are a set of planes which form a family of planes which are represented by a certain Miller index H K L so by the previous slides we know that this G H K L which is this reciprocal lattice vector uh, it is a vector which is perpendicular to these set of planes so that the distance that the length of this gkl is the minimum uh, magnitude which you can have and the minimum is simply given by this interplanar distance or 2 pi by this interplanar distance so uh, we have now connected the reciprocal lattice vectors with the lattice planes and we know why we describe why we define the miller indices the way they were uh, because they are indeed the uh, coefficients in the you can find the lattice uh, interplanar distance via uh, such a description and i will just simply give you the result that the interplanar distance is simply given by 2 pi by g magnitude uh, where the g magnitude is simply given by h square b1 square plus k square plus b2 square magnitude and so on so this is the magnitude of this g vector for a cubic system uh, because uh, b1 b2 b3 they would have the same magnitude 
so it is a rather simple form and is simply given by 2 pi by h square plus k square plus l square so if you have a certain lattice plane or family of lattice plane given by an hkl index miller index then you simply square them and add these three indices take a square root take inverse and multiply by 2 and it would give you the interplanar distance uh, for that family of planes so of course you won't have only this family of planes in the crystal you would have many other families as well but this is uh, a description hkl would only describe just one certain family of planes and g hkl defined like this would represent the corresponding reciprocal lattice vector for that family of plane So let's do a small exercise uh, on constructing a reciprocal lattice directly from looking at the family of lattice planes in a lattice. So consider uh, a real lattice, a cubic real lattice. Uh, you can see and a corresponding and a a corresponding uh, reciprocal lattice which should again be a square uh, so let's try to identify which of the lattice point corresponds to which planes within the lattice the real lattice so uh, this is the zero 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 uh, point a uh, lattice point within the reciprocal space where the h k and l all the three indices middle indices are zero uh, or zero so that would be our reference in the reciprocal space and in the real space you can take reference anywhere uh, depending on your choice it doesn't matter so uh, we can identify two set of planes immediately here let's say this axis x axis is a1 uh, this axis is a2 and the axis which is uh, out of the page is a3 then uh, these set of planes which are vertical uh, if you start from an origin and you go towards right by one unit length you would see that this plane it cuts this a1 axis so uh, it would have these planes would have an intercept given by one along a1 and because they are parallel to uh, a2 axis and if you extend this plane uh, into the z-axis as well which is out of the page so that's also parallel to the a3 which means that these vertical planes are represented by uh, Miller indices of 1 0 0 so you can define you can identify that point 1 0 0 uh, along this axis uh, at this um, at this location so this would be our 1 0 0 point within the reciprocal space uh, and that one zero zero would represent the family of these vertical planes within the real lattice similarly you have this set of planes which are cut along the a2 axis which uh, so these would represent the zero one zero set of uh, family of planes which are these horizontally aligned planes and in the reciprocal space they would represent it by this point so which means that each lattice point in the reciprocal space represents family a whole set of family of planes not just one plane no let's consider this these planes, the green planes which are tilted like this so uh, let's say if this is my origin if I go along A1, uh, these uh, slanted planes, they intersect uh, at exactly at one lattice constant. And similarly, if I go along this direction, that plane intercept A2, which is in that direction, uh, exactly at a distance 1. So this plane has an intercept 1, intercept 1, and because this is parallel to A3, uh, which means that these slanted planes have Miller indices given by 1, 1, 0. So, where we describe them in the reciprocal space is by a point 
uh, this point which is a 110 so this point would represent such a family of planes within the real uh, lattice uh, we can keep on constructing more uh, lattice planes for example you can have these vertical planes no they are repeated after every half half the lattice constant so if you start from a certain lattice constant you travel half a distance along a1 and you would encounter this plane so these planes these uh, vertical planes they can be represented by uh, a 200 index because this is uh, the intercept along a1 is one half whose inverse would be 2 and uh, the rest are 0 0 so this is 2 0 0 uh, if you don't fully understand it you should go back to uh, this um, module 3.3 .3 to understand the indexing of planes uh, 3.4 to understand the indexing of planes so this 200 would be a point in the reciprocal space here along the x-axis so this would be a 00 200 point represented by these three Miller indices and these would represent these vertical planes uh, which are these red vertical planes uh, you can have these horizontal planes uh, again half a distance apart and they would be represented by a 0 to 0 because now the periodicity of these is along the A2 axis so that would be 0 to 0 represented by a point here in the reciprocal space so uh, that's that's how you can uh, identify each of these latest points with a certain planes within the real space so that's the real space this uh, corresponding reciprocal space and each point here represent a certain family of planes within the real space so that's uh, kind of a, uh, another way of uh, connecting the real So just wanted to record a couple of important things about family of planes and um, their representation in reciprocal space. So just take cubic system, simple cubic system where you have cubic uh, unit cells uh, shown here and there's a set of planes in here. Uh, these set of planes are represented by the Miller indices 0, 1, 0 and they represent a family of lattice planes because uh, they fully cover all the lattice point within such a cubic lattice. Uh, these are not the only lattice planes, family lattice planes. You can have other lattice planes like a one one zero here as well. So you, uh, which intercept uh, along uh, at one along a one, at one along a two, and they are parallel to a three, which is into the board. So these are the 110 plane as you can see uh, they also covers all the lattice planes uh, lattice points so they are again a family of lattice plane uh, then you can have a 111 plane which uh, which uh, cut the lattice uh, vector at, uh, at at a distance one along this direction one along that direction and one along this direction so you have a 111 plane you have a family a whole set of these planes like that they cover all the lattice point in a cubic system so a one 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 represent a family of lattice plane in a cubic system uh, now look at a bcc system so you have uh, many many bc like uh, uh, four uh, bcc unit cells uh, conventional unit cells close together and there are uh, again this zero one zero uh, planes plotted here you can uh, see that you do have this set of planes but they miss certain lattice points in here which means that a 0 1 0 is a family of lattice plane in a cubic system but it's not a family of planes in a uh, body centered cubic system so that's so you have to be careful which uh, family of planes which uh, miller miller indices really represent a family of plane and which doesn't in, in a BCC system like this, a 0, 2, 0 plane would be indeed a family of lattice planes because uh, the index is double here, which means that you have one plane in the middle 
uh, of the unit cell of the conventional unit cell so that plane covers the these uh, lattice points which were not covered here so here you have these lattice family set of uh, planes which cover all the lattice point in a bcc system and uh, a 110 plane uh, which are here which were shown here for a cubic system they are again represent family of lattice planes in a uh, bcc as well because they cover all the lattice point so what does this mean that let's say if uh, a family of lattice plane uh, is uh, let's say a certain combination of these hkls uh, does not represent a family of planes like here in a bcc 010 does not represent a family of lattice planes it means that uh, if you construct a reciprocal lattice for a bcc system it won't have a 010 lattice point in there it would be missing so such uh, these are important uh, uh, things to note here because in some uh, system crystal system some of the uh, reciprocal lattice points might graph of various um, unit cells shown previously as well and it shows a combination of several lattice planes so let's start with the case of a simple cubic um, so in a simple cubic you can have a family of planes which is a 100 plane so two of its members are shown here a plane in this here and in this plane here both of them belongs to a family of planes 100 and these are families of plane because they don't have extra planes and they all if you combine if you take the full family it would cover all the latest points similarly a 110 plane would also be a family of lattice planes because uh, you see you, you see just one member of this family the next member would have a plane passing through these two point and the neighboring one would have a plane passing through these two points and overall when you combine them they cover all the latest points so no latest points is left behind same is the case for 111 you have a 111 plane here and a 111 plane here both families of this 111 and uh, you combine all of them they cover all the latest points uh, but now coming to a bcc in a bcc a 100 plane a family of plane if you consider it would have this member and this would this member uh, but it would uh, not take into consideration it would leave out this lattice point which is in the center so a 100 has missing lattice points uh, and that's why uh, a 100 uh, index is not part of the reciprocal lattice of a bcc crystal so a bcc crystal would have a missing 100 uh, reciprocal lattice point but it would have a 200 lattice point uh, because these are the 200 lattice planes uh, family of lattice planes and they indeed um, also cover this lattice point in the center so no lattice point misses out here a 100 would be an equally good uh, family of lattice plane for a bcc as well because it uh, not only cover the atoms the lattice point at the edges but also in the center of a body centered cubic system a 111 lattice plane on the other hand won't be a family of lattice planes so if we if you superimpose these 111 lattice plane on a bcc system you can easily visualize that the atom which is in the center of a bcc would miss out and you would have um, missing uh, lattice uh, lattice points for the bcc system if you consider a 111 um, uh, miller indices so a 111 lattice point uh, is missing in a bcc uh, reciprocal lattice and a bcc reciprocal lattice won't have 111 point but it would have a 222 point because it cuts uh, a half a half and a half on all three planes uh, all three directions and it uh, uh, indeed covers the, the the point which is in the center as well uh, so it won't leave out uh, any lattice points uh, 
so coming to the FCC again in the FCC a 100 won't have uh, won't be a lattice point in the reciprocal lattice of an FCC because a 100 plane would leave out uh, the these lattice points which are in the center but a 200 won't leave them out uh, on the other hand a 110 which was a uh, a uh, family of lattice plane in a BCC system and in a simple cubic system is no longer a family of lattice planes in a, an FCC system because this uh, would um, leave out the lattice plane, the lattice point which are in the face here and on the face here, so uh, which are these two lattice points. So these would be covered by another plane which would be a 220 plane. So a 220 plane. Are uh, indeed family of lattice planes in an FCC system, um, and a one 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 is again a family of lattice plane in an FCC system. Just to uh, summarize, so in a BCC system, a one zero zero and a one 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 lattice point would be missing, uh, would not uh, represent a family of lattice plane, and that's that's why those lattice points are missing in the reciprocal lattice of a BCC. Similarly, in an FCC system, a 100, a 110 and a 222 planes are such that they would uh, uh, miss some of the reciprocal lattice point and that's why they won't form, uh, they won't be part of the um, reciprocal lattice of the FCC system. So, such lattice points whose uh, family, uh, whose, uh, whose uh, planes miss out on lattice points or uh, these lattice points are called as systematic absences and they play an important role uh, in identification um, of crystal structure by um, x-ray diffraction and other scattering techniques so uh, that's something which we would cover in detail in the next module. So just one more subtle point here. Um, what about a two zero zero plane in a simple cubic system? So you can take a two zero zero uh, set of uh, a two zero zero set of plane in a simple cubic system, but what you would have, you would have this extra uh, plane in the center, which won't have any lattice point. If you take, if you superimpose a two zero zero set of uh, lattice planes on a simple cubic system, so Technically, a 200 uh, would not form a family of plane for a simple cubic system because you have uh, lattice planes which don't have any lattice points. Uh, but they are not form of the systematic absences because they would still cover all the lattice points. So if you combine all the 200 uh, planes, you would cover all the lattice points. So that's a, a small technical point which you need to understand here in terms of systematic absences. summarize uh, uh, you can here is a table of uh, all the various Miller indices which are possible um, in, in in cubic systems uh, and they're arranged um, in an ascending order um, by n where n is simply given by uh, the square sums of the Miller indices so s square plus k square plus l square and this ascending order corresponding to these Miller indices and here are the uh, three uh, cubic system, a simple cubic, a BCC and an FCC. And uh, with these sticks corresponds, it tells you that uh, these are not the missing, in, so all these indices uh, indeed belongs to the cubic system. There's a missing tick here in the BCC which would mean that the 100 uh, doesn't belong to um, the BCC system and its uh, systematic absence here. Similarly, a 111 uh, is uh, also a systematic absence in the BCC system, uh, but it's not an F systematic absence in an FCC system. So, this kind of an elaborate table which combine mm, the observations from the last two slides. And such a table would be handy to interpret X ray diffraction data. Uh, which we would uh, try to interpret next week 
uh, and which tells you about the nature of crystallographic uh, structure of any underlying crystal. So in this module, uh, what we did was uh, look at the relationship of reciprocal lattice with a family of lattice planes and we found out that a reciprocal lattice, each reciprocal lattice point uh, represent a vector which is perpendicular uh, or normal to a family of lattice planes and uh, when you construct reciprocal lattice vector for different lattices uh, you can do so by looking at the planes and um, or rather family of planes and you can have certain missing lattice points in there uh, which are specific for specific uh, crystal systems so uh, the next time we would take up the case where uh, we use the idea of reciprocal lattice to explain uh, scattering from a crystal system and that scattering uh, is used to uh, and scattering is indeed used to identify um, the internal uh, lattice structure of a specific uh, physical crystal.